Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. What are some of the problems that plague our communities? And when I say our communities, I'm talking about the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. What are some of those problems that we encounter? Uh huh. No guidance to our youth. Uh huh. Right. Which leads them to doing stuff that's going on now. Like what? Like doing some of the robbing, stealing. Right. Now, is it really the government? Okay. Give me Deuteronomy 6 and 7. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 6 and 7. Uh huh. They kept some type of structure. Right. Now, the government took all our and now these guys got no They got no Right. So, read. Right. So, read this real quick. This is Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently. Go up a little bit. Verse 6. Uh, start at 3. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, uh -huh. in the land that thou floweth milk and honey. So if you're familiar with the Bible, this is when, Mo when Moses delivered the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt, and they was headed into the promised land. So this is, this is Moses reiterating to Israel what the Most High God told him. Read. <clears throat> Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So he let them know it's only one God. And our God, the God of Israel, is that one God. Read. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, uh -huh. with all thy might. Right. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So he said, these words that I command you shall be in your heart. Read. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And I shall teach them diligently to thy children. So, yes, the government set different programs in the way, but it's on us to teach our children. And that's where, because today was, well, who's working? Like, you get, if you, because you, I think you, you married, right? You and your wife work. You got children. So, who's raising the children? And I'm not, it's not specific to you. This is the black community. I'm just using the example. The schools. So it's in, in our in our communities. One of the ways we we can take because in Illinois, just dealing with homeschooling. Illinois homeschooling is pretty open. Well, what you can do and how you can do it is just you got to make sure they're able to pass a certain test when they get to a certain grade level. But read it again. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. So the Bible commands us as a, as parents. To teach the laws of God to our children diligently, meaning when they and how what is that diligently? Because it say continuously. Diligently is another word for continuously. Read. 
and when thou walkest by the way. So read it again from the top. Read that verse again from the top. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Uh huh. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. So when you're sitting in your house, what you telling them? You telling them about like if you if you let's say let's say in your past you was gang banging. You show them what the laws say, and you say, hey, when I was young, I, was, I got caught up in this, but that's not the way to go. You're supposed to live like this. You're not supposed to hate your brother. Because Leviticus 19, 17 say, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart, or nor avenge yourself. So you're supposed to love your brother. If you see your brother hurting, you're supposed to be able to help him. Read. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto no. thy children. No. I'll read on, read on. Just and pick up where you left off at. Yes, sir. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house. Uh huh. So when you're sitting in the house, you're showing them various things. You're giving them examples. But read on. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou walkest by the way, when you're out in the streets, when you go in the grocery stores, you see a woman that's dressed like a, a harlot. You let them. You let your daughters know that's that's not how a woman dress. A woman is supposed to cover herself up for her husband. Read. And when thou liest down. And when thou liest down, you when you go to bed at night, you're showing them the commandments. Read. And when thou risest up. And when you rise up, it's all about the commandment. You're showing them what the what God commanded us to do. Read. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. Uh-huh. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. You you like the scripture say in Proverbs 22 and 16, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. We supposed to be teach. We it's our job as the parents to teach them. Even when they if they in the public school system, they go into school, when they come home, what you learn today? What you see today, and the things that don't line up with the scriptures, hey, nah, forget that. Don't, don't, don't even learn it to get past your grade, but forget about that stuff because it goes against our God. Read. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house uh -huh. and on thy gates. So this is on your, your pictures, your, your frames, you've got the laws throughout your house. So that is always on our mind. Read. And it shall be. When the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to, and to Jacob, to give thee great and godly cities which thou buildest not. Uh, now read, go to, um, go back to, is it 4? Chapter 4, where you say, this is your wisdom in the sight of the nations. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. Read, read verse 5 with it. Verse 5, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, uh -huh. that, ye should do, that ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. Uh -huh. So for keep the commandments and do them. Read. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. For this is our wisdom in the sight of the nations. Today, we don't see that. The nations ride past and look at, this. Look at these niggas over here. Killing each other. Look at these niggas over here. Look how look how much dirt. Look how much trash is in their communities. We ashamed to the to the earth now. Well, well God didn't make us, make us like that. We supposed to be thriving. But the reason we not thriving is to go to Deuteronomy 28 and 15. The reason that we not thriving is because are we doing those things today? Are we teaching our children the commandments? Uh, and a lot of us go to the Christian church and are we and we still not teaching our children the commandments of God. They, so they're growing up and they're learning the things that they see at school. They, they, they yield, they, they falling into peer pressure and all of those things which cause them to, now they smoking weed, they drinking at 16, they joining a the gang. Because a lot, of, in a, a lot of our house, a lot of our families are broken. Where you got young men being raised by a woman. And the woman is going, most, most women, and they write in the in a, in a right manner, they, they, care, they care for their children, they're going to do the best they can. But the best they can is not going to show that young man how to be a man. That young man is going to learn her emotions. He's going to see, he's going to observe how she handles situations. And that young man will grow up and what? Somebody step on your shoe and it's a fight. Somebody pulling out a gun over, over a $100 pair of shoes. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is Moses letting the, instructing the Israel again. He said, it's going to come to pass. We know that this Bible was written before you was born, before I was born, for the, the oldest man in here. It was, the Bible was here before us. Even from before our grandfathers and grandmothers, great-grandfathers. This Bible been here. 
It says, so it shall come to pass. So something's going to happen in the future to the Israelites. Read. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If they won't listen to the voice of God, the things that God taught us to do. Read. To observe to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What is a curse? Yeah. Is it something bad or good? It's something bad. So he said, so God said, if you don't, if you don't obey my rules, bad things will happen to you. Or if you don't obey my rules, um, I lost my train of thought. If you don't obey my rules, I'm going to discipline you. And just, just like a father, you got children, you tell your children to do something, and they don't, you come home from work and they ain't do it, what's going on? It's trouble. It's trouble. It's discipline. So now we're dealing with the father of spirits because we just inhabit this body. We got a spirit. So even if this body dies, our spirit is still there. So we got to look at this because this Bible is a spiritual book. So we got to look at it in a spiritual sense because a lot of people, the things, some of the things that we're going to bring out, a lot of people that think of it like, man, God, I don't believe God that harsh. But God is dealing with us as a, spiritually as a nation. Read on. Cursed shall thou be in the city. And cursed shall thou be in the field. When you examine, have you ever been outside of Chicago? I mean, what, what places have you been? Just the name of name a few. Uh huh. You said Turks and Caicos. What is that? Okay. What's going on? That's the Bahamas. What's going on over there? Right, it was a lot of poverty. So, and where, where, and so that that's read it again, because over there that's the Jamaicans. We the same people. And we know that that's obvious. But also Mexico, we also the same people. When you go to Mexico, it's the same thing. You can go to the because I've been to Cancun before. You go in Cancun, they got the the um, the resort area. It look all good. But when you go off, if you go off into the community, when you go into there, you see the divide. And once you pass that line, it's like, whoa, what happened? And, and how they live is often it's worse than what we see here. But read it again. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So when you examine our communities, when you just examine all the nations on the earth, who fits that? And they commu who, whose communities are cursed or bad things are happening in their communities? When you look at all the nations. Yeah, who communities? Yeah. This is blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Because Hisp Hispanics, they, they neighborhoods may look a little bit better, but they also killing each other, shooting each other down. We, we robbing, all of that stuff is going on. Uh, jump up to 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So now it says, thy, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to another people. Who did that happen to? Well, your, us. During slavery and today. Because you got DCFS. What happens? Somebody, somebody call and say, hey, he mistreating his kids. Yada, yada, yada. Now you got to knock on your door. Yeah, we got a we got a report that X Y Z was going on. Now we got to examine. And if they if they deem that you're not fit to take care of your children, they taking them and putting them into the system. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Read on. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And this is we we seen it specifically in the uh, um, in slavery when our children was. Stripped from the slave master and sold, you just seen them. They was, we was all we could do was cry and loan for our children. But what? And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Uh huh. And there shall be no might in thine hand. There was no might in our hand. We had no military might. We had no political might. We had no economic might. It was nothing we could do. All we could do was cry and dream that we see our children again. But there was nothing that we could do. That ain't happening to no other nation on this earth. That's how you know that this Bible is our history book.
and the, the only way to solve the problems that's in our community is for us to return to this Bible. Not, not return to the Christian church, but return to this Bible and actually doing what it tells us to do. Read. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation what thou knowest not eat up. So it says, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a, la shall a nation read it again. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation what thou knowest not eat up. Which thou, a nation which thou knowest not eat up. What happened to us here? It says, what, what labors did we do on this earth? And this, just dealing with America, what labors did we do? We built the White House. We built pretty much everything that's here. And what, did we, did we bear the fruit of it? Did we eat the fruit of it? We still ain't eating the fruit of it. It says, read it, uh, read it again from the top. The fruit of thy land. The fruit of thy land. We was picking cotton. We was picking sugar cane. We was on the fields, doing all the work. Did we benefit from it? And we still ain't benefit, benefited from it. Everything that we've done in this earth, what they call us. Lazy. We don't take care of our children. All of those things that jump to 37. They say all these things about us. And in, in some cases, it's true. But why is it true? Because they beat us down as a people. They beat us down and we, we got to a point where we tired. Like, man, whatever. If I, if I do it, I, it ain't, I ain't going to benefit from it anyway, so why do anything? And that's that's what that's and it that turns into our young men hanging on the corner because we so oppressed. Every time we try to rise up, we get shut down. When you had Black Wall Street, many Black Wall Streets on the earth, and what happened? We strived, we got together, we was thriving, and then what? They came in and bombed us. Read that. Verse thirty-seven. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So it says, I shall become an astonishment. An astonishment is a wonder. When, when people look at our communities and look at what we, the things that we do, and all that, it's an astonishment. Like, why, why do they, even us, like, man, why, why would you shoot your brother over some shoes? Why? Uh, read it again from the top. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb. And a, a proverb. What is a proverb? Huh? What is a proverb? That, that proverb is going right back to that black men is lazy. Black men don't take care of their children. That's a proverb. That's a wise saying. It's not, even though it's not true for each individual one of us, as a nation, when you look at us as a nation, it's true, but it's only true because we so beat down. A lot of us, we just gave up. Like, man, whatever. It is what it is. I just, I'd rather stand on the block than try to go and get a job because all they're going to do is treat me wrong when I go in that job. All they're going to do is give me the short. I could be the best worker there, and they're they going to make me, they're going to work me to death, but not give me the fruits of my labor. That's what we go through. Read. In a byword. In a byword, meaning we're going to call ourselves outside, anything outside of our God-given name. Our nationality done changed every 10 years when you go back. We done, we done, we done call ourselves Afro-American, Negroes, African-American, Black-American. We call ourselves Black. We call ourselves everything. And all of those nationalities that we come, make claim to, you can't go back in time 200, 300 years and see those names. We have no national origin. We don't know who we are. We don't know where we come, we don't know where we come from. We don't know nothing. The furthest most of us can go back is slavery. That's us being called a Bible. Get uh, Isaiah 65 and 15. That's how we know that this Bible is our, it's our history book. We are the real Jews. Because the, the, the things that we read out of the Bible, those are, when you look at our community, you look at us, we fit these things. Read. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. It said, ye shall leave your name for a, your, for a curse. Our name, the nation, we are the Israelites. Israel. Israel means a prince that has power with God. But right now, we're not living like princes that got power with God. We look at, we living like slaves. But it's all because we broke God's commandments. Because we turned away, we turned our back on our God. So we turned our back on him. He said, all right, 
Go on ahead. Figure it out. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see how far you get. Read. And you shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. Uh -huh. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. He said he's going to call his servants by another name. That's black, Hispanic, native. Because even with the, when, you, when you think about the Hispanics and natives, this is their land. They was, they was here. But Christopher Columbus came over and said he discovered America. How can you discover something with people already ha inhabit it? They, they was living over here thriving as a people. I ain't going to say they was mad in their business. They was, they was in idolatry. They was doing things against God. And that goes back to show. That's why, the thing, that's why this land was taken from them. Because they wasn't serving God. They was in the midst of idolatry. So to go back to uh, Deuteronomy 28. Did we finish that? Yep, that's it. Go to two, back to 28, 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shall thy serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So he said, you know, this is one of the curses. He said, therefore y'all shall serve your enemies that the Lord is going to send against you. Read. In hunger. In hunger. If we want to get something to eat, you got to go to McDonald's, Jewels, Walmart. Do we own these? These do we own these companies? As a as a nation, we don't own these companies, but we got to go and to them. When we was in slavery, who was feeding us? They were. Read. And thirst. And in thirst, if you got a house, you got to pay a water bill every three months, every month. And if you don't pay that water bill, they cutting your they cutting your water source off. If you want when you want something to drink, you got to go to the store and get Dasani. Uh, Ice Mountain, Aquafina. We don't own the manufacturing companies that bottle that water. Let alone we got to pay for water, which comes freely out of the earth. We got to we serving our enemies for 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 our drink, for our food. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness, the clothes that's on our back. We don't own the manufacturing companies that the um, the uh, what is it called the the fabric companies. Mm -hmm. The uh, what is the textile? The textile. That's the word I'm looking for. We don't own the textiles that, that put the, 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 the cotton and the wool together to uh, make the clothes, produce the clothes. We got to go to our enemies to do it. Read. And in one of all things. And in one of all things. You want to get married, you got to go to the courthouse and get a marriage license. You have children, you got to go to the government to get a, a social security card, to get a social security number, to get your birth certificate. All of those things we got to go to our enemy for. Things that at one point in time we had, we had, we had everything that they got set up in this earth. You know they, they stole it from our Bible. But now we are subservient to them, so we got to go to them to get it. And one of all things, uh, health care, uh, education, um, uh, what else? Religion. They give us a religion. Because one of the, the, the major religions on the earth, one of the major religions, Christianity, you open up a Bible and it got white images all over the place. You got white images of Christ. Where in the Bible does it say that Christ is a white man? It's not in there. But you can find it in there where it describes him as a black man. But they've, they've hidden that from us. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Now it says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Hmm. Who, 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 did the, who put a yoke of iron on our necks? When they came and picked us up off the west coast of Africa, we wasn't Africans. It wasn't Africans selling Africans. It was Africans selling Israelites to the white man. So it says, he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. That's, that's showing you who the enemy is. Read. Until he have destroyed thee. Until he have destroyed thee. When they picked us up on the west coast of Africa, we knew who we were. And you look at the slave records. All our names ended in Yah. We knew that we were the Israelites. We knew who we were when we, when we was over there and they came and got us. But they destroyed. Now we don't know. They destroyed us. That's why, that's why we don't have the yokes of iron on our neck no more. That's why a lot, we, we, they, they, they destroyed our minds. And now they took them chains. Just like a dog when they got that invisible leash where to go certain fire, get a shock. That's what they did to us in slavery. 
they destroyed us. They destroyed us to where, to the point where we wouldn't run no more. They took the strongest, the, 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 they took the leader, the strongest man in the pack, and they beat him in front of everybody. They ripped him in half in front of everybody. They got him to submit in front of everybody, and they, that made all the other men cower back. Like, you know what? We just gonna, we just gonna stay here and serve. And then it, it demasculated the men in front of the women. So now that's why today you got so many, so many of our women disrespect black men because we've been, we've been brought to nothing to them. They'll, they'll listen to their boss at their job before they even listen to what a man got to say, what a black man got to say. That's all a part of the curses. They have destroyed us as a people because the, the, the family unit is, suppo is supposed to be where the man, the man is leading the house and the woman is following in his, in his, in his example and in his instruction. But that's not, the, that's not the case with the majority of the black families, if there's, if there's a two-parent household. When there's a two-parent household, oftentimes, our men, men got that thought process of uh, the woman is the boss. Or you got many families, many family units got big ma, where, where you, go to, you go to the grandmother to get the instruction and the guidance and all that. And it's not supposed to be like, it's supposed to be the men that's setting the tone. But they, that's, how we, that's how we know that we are destroyed. Read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Read the same thing. How it, they came over to the west coast of Africa and got us. But they also came over here from Europe and Spain. When the, amongst the, uh, the, the, native, the native Indians and the uh, Hispanics. Read. From one end of the earth. As swift as the eagle flies. And they came over here as swift as the eagle will fly. What's the, what's the symbol of America? What was the symbol of Greece? Yeah. Uh, let me see one. Let me see that flyer. Because when you, when you examine history, I don't know if you, when you look at the, the symbol of the Greeks, they had the eagle. The, uh, the Romans. The eagle, the USA, the eagle. Because when you look at it, Greece, a lot of a lot of the modern Bibles don't have the apocrypha in it. But when you get a lot of the, 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 the a lot of the times, what happens? We don't have this history. When Christ was walking the earth, we was under the Romans. We was in captivity under the Romans, and they had the eagle. Even until today, they have the eagle. So read that again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Uh huh. So when they came over here to the natives, they came as swift as the eagle fly. They came bearing the eagle. This is when they was separate. They was trying to separate from Great Britain and come over here and establish something. But they came over here because the Most High God sent them over here because the the natives was over here in idolatry. They were sacrificing human flesh. All that. Like, Give me that in uh, Hosea. Yeah. So it, it wasn't a coincidence that ain't no man just come up in their man like, you know what, let's go over there and see what's over there. No, the Most High God put it in their spirit to come over here because that was his punishment to the natives and the Hispanics because they was in idolatry. Same thing with us while we was on the west coast of Africa. We was breaking his commandments. So he sent the nations against us to punish us. Um, read it. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 17. Ephraim is joined to idols. Ephraim is the natives, the natives, the Native Americans and Hispanics. It's what you, when you re-examine the Bible, they would be called the Northern Kingdom. It says Ephraim is joined to idols. That's what they were doing. If you've seen the movie uh, Apocalypto, they were, that's what they was doing. They was actually going and um, capturing each other and sacrificing themselves, sacrificing to the sun. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Uh huh. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So this is then. He said, the Lord said, I got a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, the Israelites. Read. Because there is no truth. There is no truth. You're not keeping the commandments. You're full of hypocrisy. Read. Nor mercy. Nor mercy. We had no mercy one to another. Your brother owed you money. Nah. You gonna owe me? You gonna you gonna pay me back? We was real rough with each other. Read. And the same thing you see today in the streets. Read. Nor knowledge of God in the land. Nor there was no knowledge of God in the land. That's not new. That's the same thing we're going over on today. There's no knowledge of God in the streets of Chicago. 
You got a church on every corner just about. But there's no knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is the commandments. Read. By swearing and lying. By swearing and lying. Man, I swear to God. That's all we do. I swear. I put on, on my mama head. That's all we do. We swear and what? And lying. And lying. That's, that's why a lot of the issues go on. We always in the midst of some lying or some type of evil. Read. And killing. And killing. And stealing. And stealing. Those are the results of half the crime. That's in the majority of the crime that goes on in our neighborhood. So it's nothing new. This, that's how you know that this Bible is our book. Read. And committing adultery. And committing adultery. How many men are married, but they got a mistress over here, a mistress over there? How many women are married, but they sneaking out on their husband? They going to the club. And in many times, in, in many times the husband knows she's going to the club. But th this is the, these are the things that plague us. And that's why we live in the conditions that we live in today. Read. They break out and blood touches blood. They break out and blood touches blood. We killing each other. One person, one brother wires up, kill this brother. Oh, now oh, he killed my brother. And now somebody else got it, then they just go back and forth. We got a gang war. Read. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. Uh huh. With the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yeah, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Uh, jump to six. Verse six. My people are destroyed. So the reason we live in a destroyed economy, a destroyed estate, read. For the lack of knowledge. For the lack of knowledge. Now, let's see what that knowledge is. Go to uh, Malachi. This is Malachi chapter two and verse seven. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So it says the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So when you go into the Christian church, when you go to your, your pastor, the pastor is supposed to be giving you the knowledge of God. Because it said the priest's lips are supposed to keep knowledge. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. And that knowledge is God's laws. We're supposed to go to the pastors to seek knowledge so that we can go back and teach our children. So that we can go back and teach the community. But what's going on? The churches ain't, the churches ain't teaching that. They're not teaching God's laws. They're teaching tithes. So out of all the things in the Old Testament, that's the only thing you can pull out. And then being pulled it out incorrectly, because tithes was never money. But they, 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 they take the money from the community, but then they're not feeding the community what the community needs to get right. And you just look at Chicago. I don't, I don't know if you're from Chicago or not, if you've been to Chicago. It's a church. You can go, you can go two blocks and find 10 churches. And then in the community right behind the church, it's in, in shambles. So read on. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. The, the pastors are supposed to be the messengers of God, but they not. Read. But he, uh, That's it? Yes, sir. That was it on that? Yes, sir. So the, the, solution to, the solution to our community is God's commandments. That's what we have learned. So long that the, in Christianity we've been taught that you got to keep the commandments, but, you don't, but you're not going to be judged by the commandments. That God ain't going to judge you because Christ came and did away with all of that. That's not true. We have to keep the commandments, and this is what we're going to be judged by. And this is what we are being judged by as a nation. We're, in the, we're going through the things, the, the multitude of things that we are going through in our communities, while we can never come together to do nothing. Um, we, we constantly in poverty. A young man standing on the corner selling drugs to each other, selling dope, getting in gangs and killing each other. All of those things are happening because we, because we have departed from the laws of God. I'm going to give you one more. Get Leviticus 19 and 17. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Uh -huh. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Read. So that's, this is one law there. If we kept this law, that would eliminate the violence. Because that means that if you, send, if, you, if you steal something from me, I come and speak with you about it, give you the opportunity to we, we make peace with each other, and then we walk away peacefully. Now, if I go around you, I'm not going to put my stuff out in front of you no more because I know that you battle with being a thief, but I'm, I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to pull a gun out and shoot you. Read. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If we just apply it that, that would eliminate the crime rate in our, in our community because now I'm not, avenge, I'm not seeking revenge on you because you did something to my family member or my brother or my sister. 
Now jump up, jump up to 27. Verse 27. Ye shall not round the corners of your head, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. So now this law, this is a law for us as, for us as men. Now this law ain't going to necessarily fix the community, fix the crime rate and all of that, but this is still something that us as men have to uphold. Read it again. Ye shall not round the corners of your head. You know what that means that's going into? It said you shall not round the corners of your head. Read. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. Now jump to 21 and 5. Now 21 and 5 is going to say it plainly. Read. They shall not make baldness upon their head. As Israelite men, we're not supposed to bald our heads. That's shave our heads bald. Now, some, in some cases, you go forehead bald where you lose your hair. That's fine. But you can cut your hair low, but you're not supposed to take a razor to your head. And the reason being, when these laws were re-given to us, we was coming out of the land of Egypt. And that's what the Egyptians did. So the Most High was telling us, no, don't, don't, after the doing, in, verse, in chapter 18, it says, after the doing of the land of Egypt, thou shalt not do. And then he started giving us the laws back because we always had the laws from the beginning. Read on. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Neither shall you shave off the corner of your beard. That's talking about your whole beard. You're supposed to let it grow. Now you can keep it trim, keep it neat, but you're supposed to let your beard grow. It ain't got to be big like my beard or his beard, but you can, you're supposed to keep it neat and cut, but you're not supposed to cut it all the way off. This is just one of those laws that if you've been in Christianity, I can guarantee you never heard it. Because I was in Christianity and I never heard it. When I seen, when I heard it, I'm like, wait a minute, you didn't tell me I've been doing this? But when you just think about it, just think, when you think about it in the natural, like your son, I don't know how old he is now, but when he gets four, 13, 14, and he get that first string, even you remember, when you got that first couple strings, you was excited about it. You was happy. I was waiting for the rest of it. So now when the rest comes, come, what sense does it make now you're cutting it off? That's, that's because we've, been, we've, we've learned the ways of our oppressor. Because what they tell us, you got a job, you got to be clean shaven. They keep us from keeping God's commandments. And that's when we learned those things. So now we have to return back to those. Now this, this specific law, applying this ain't gonna stop a brother from killing his brother. But this is one of the laws that the Most High God will judge us by. He judges us. Cause even just real quick, cause when you, when you do shave, you get hair bumps. And them things hurt. But it, it, it happens. But you, yeah, it can. It can yeah. happen. Those, that's, an, that's a judgment. Mm -hmm. Because we're not supposed to be shaving it. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it, since I've, I know since, for me, just, just me, since I've grown my, since I've been growing my beard, I've never, I haven't had any issues with hair bumps. Mm -hmm. But it's, it be, and then it's, a, it's a, when you look at the Bible dictionary, it says a, a beard is a badge of manly dignity. Mm -hmm. Just like a lion. You know, you can tell the difference between a male lion and a female lion by what? They mean. And just looking at it from a carnal level, you don't see no, you don't see lions getting their mane cut. That, that lion distinguishes them from a boy, from a, uh, a cub, to that male lion that's ruling the jungle. That's how we as men. Our beard is a badge of our manly dignity. And that's God's laws, and we haven't been we, we haven't been taught these things. Those are the that's the problem with our community because we turned our back on God, so it, it pollutes our judgment, it pollutes our mind when we're not following the ways of the Most High God. Nation is men leading by example. Ah!